keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Put away from thee a forward mouth, and perverse lips put far from thee. Let thine eyes look right on, and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet, and let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand, nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. As we continue to analyze the testaments of our fathers, I pray that the knowledge and understanding of every Israelite in the awakening are increasing. Once upon a time, the identity and legacy of the indigenous black people was a mystery and non-existent outside of slavery. We didn't know who we were as a people. Our history, legacy, and bloodline have been erased, rewritten, and hidden by our enemies. Now the Most High is making himself known to his people, as well as restoring the heritage he has given to his people. We as Israelites have to take the time to appreciate the Most High for what he is doing for us. Living in a world where your history starts with slavery and you're a descendant of the first man and woman, Adam and Eve, didn't make sense. Adam and Eve were never slaves. How could our story start with slavery? For a long time, the Satans and the spiritual wickedness in high places control the narrative. In the last days, the Most High is restoring everything that was lost. Everything that was hidden is coming into the light. The Most High said in his words that he would give us back the years that was stolen from us. And I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm my great army which I sent among you. The scripture in Joel chapter 2 verse 25 said, The Most High will restore the years the locusts have eaten. The scriptures went on to identify the locust as a caterpillar, the canker worm, and the palmer worm. Notice the scriptures associate the caterpillar and worms with the stripping spirit. Israelites, when you see caterpillars and worms in the spirit realm, know that there are unclean spirits coming to devastate you by eating away at your resources until they've taken everything. The Most High sent a plague of locusts to Mizraim to destroy all of their resources for refusing to let his people go. Else, if thou refuse to let my people go, behold, tomorrow will I bring the locusts into thy coast, and they shall cover the face of the earth that one cannot be able to see the earth, and they shall eat the residue of that which is escaped, which remaineth unto you from the hail, and shall eat every tree which groweth for you out of the field. And they shall fill thy houses, and the houses of all thy servants, and the houses of all the Egyptians, which neither thy fathers nor thy father's fathers have seen, since the day that they were upon the earth unto this day. And he turned himself, and went out from Pharaoh. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand over the land of Egypt for the locusts, that they may come up upon the land of Egypt, and eat every herb of the land, even all that the hail hath left. For they covered the face of the whole earth, so that the land was darkened, and they did eat every herb of the land, and all the fruit of the trees which the hail had left. And there remained not any green thing in the trees, or in the herbs of the field, through all the land of Egypt. Remember, Israelites, animals in the spirit realm are spirits. The characteristics of the animal would help you understand the dream. I hope these scriptures help the Israelites that are struggling to decode the symbols they see in the spirit realm. I want to thank our Father for giving us back the years and rich history that was stolen from us. The colonizers and their children represent the locusts that have stripped us of our legacy and heritage. The 12 tribe series has really helped many Israelites narrow down which tribe they descend from, giving Israelites back their bloodline and identity. For a long time, the tribe of Judah was everybody's tribe. With the testaments of the patriarchs coming to light, many Israelites can now determine which of the tribes they descend from. In the process of the Most High increasing the knowledge of his people, the doctrines of devils are being exposed and debunked. The Most High did say in the last days, knowledge would increase. Israelites, let the Holy Spirit unseal the sealed scriptures. 
But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words, and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. The Most High used the sons of Jacob to carry on the covenant promise he made to Adam that was transferred to Abraham. The Most High promised Adam that when the five day and a half sentence was fulfilled, the Most High would save Adam and the righteous seed of Adam and Eve. Yea, the word that will again save thee when the five days and a half are fulfilled. But when Adam heard these words from God and of the great five days and a half, he did not understand the meaning of them. For Adam was thinking that there would be but five days and a half for him to the end of the world. And Adam wept and prayed to God to explain it to him. Then God in his mercy for Adam, who was made after his own image and similitude, explained to him that these were 5,500 years and how one would then come and save him and his seed. Then will I in mercy save thy soul and the soul of the righteous to give them rest in my garden. And that shall be when the end of the world is come. The Satans spent every generation trying to void the everlasting covenant. They've created doctrines in the beast religion about the Old Testament covenant have been fulfilled. That is false. An everlasting covenant doesn't expire, but transfer from one generation to the next. The Satans convinced many in the beast religion to denounce the Most High by rejecting the covenant in exchange for an idol called Jesus. Through the sin of idolatry, the population of the wicked are increasing. The Most High always reserved for himself a remnant that will carry the covenant to the next generation. Israelites, nothing that is everlasting could expire nor be voided. The Most High will fulfill everything he set out to do. The scriptures did say all things written must be fulfilled. These be the days of vengeance that all things which are written may be fulfilled. The everlasting covenant the Most High first made with Adam have been transferring from generation to generation. As the descendants of Jacob and his sons, we are the ones carrying on the covenant. It is our duty as Jacob and his son's descendants to make sure the everlasting covenant promise is never lost, but continue to transfer from generation to generation. Israelites, that is why it is important to teach your children. By teaching your children about the Most High, His laws, statutes, and commandments, the everlasting covenant continue to transfer. And ye shall teach them your children, speaking of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt write them upon the doorposts of thine house, and upon thy gates. If you don't have any descendants to transfer the covenant to, then the everlasting covenant will become lost. Israelites, make sure you're creating offsprings in your image and likeness to pass on the covenant. The tares are not qualified to carry on the covenant. If we don't teach our children about their heritage, the covenant will become lost again, giving the other species of mankind the opportunity to claim our covenant for themselves just like we have witnessed over the years before the awakening. The Most High chose Jacob and his descendants to show himself strong through. The awakening of the Israelites is proof that the word of the Most High will never be lost, regardless unto the numerous of times the heathens alter the scriptures. The Most High will sanctify his people through his words, because his words is truth. The scripture said heaven and earth will pass away, but the truth of the Most High's words will never pass away. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Israelites, the time has come for you to take back your heritage. You don't need anyone's permission to do so. The Israelite nation consists of 12 tribes. Each of Jacob's sons are a progenitor of a tribe within the Israelite nation. Today, we will review the testament of the progenitor of the tribe of Simeon. Simeon is the second son of Jacob by Leah. Before Simeon was conceived, Leah prayed to the Most High about the hatred towards her. When Leah saw that she conceived again, she said in prayer, the Most High heard her and she called her son Simeon. And she conceived again and bare a son and said, 
because the Lord hath heard that I was hated, he hath therefore given me this son also. And she called his name Simeon. The name Simeon means to hear or to be heard. The scriptures in the Bible does not give a lot of information about the tribe of Simeon. Nevertheless, the tribe of Simeon is important in the Israelite nation like all the other tribes. When Jacob gathered his sons to him to tell them about their future, Jacob's blessing and prophecy for Simeon was the same with Levi. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together, that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Gather yourselves together, and hear, ye sons of Jacob, and hearken unto Israel your father. Simeon and Levi are brethren. Instruments of cruelty are in their habitations. O my soul, come not thou into their secret, unto their assembly. Mine honor, be not thou united. For in their anger they slew a man, and in their self-will they digged down a wall. Cursed be their anger, for it was fierce, and their wrath, for it was cruel. I will divide them in Jacob, and scatter them in Israel. Jacob cursed the anger of Simeon and Levi. Jacob said their wrath was fierce. Jacob knew that Simeon and Levi's wrath combined is a force to be reckoned with. Therefore, Jacob said he would scatter them in Israel. Jacob was upset with his sons for killing the men of Shechem. Simeon and Levi did not tell their father Jacob about their plans. Jacob was blindsided on the attack against the people of Shechem. Jacob felt because Hamar and his son Shechem accepted to be circumcised and become one with them, that was good enough for Dina. Simeon and Levi was not having it. And it came to pass on the third day, when they were sore, that two of the sons of Jacob, Simeon and Levi, Dinah's brethren, took each man his sword, and came upon the city boldly, and slew all the males. And they slew Hamor and Shechem his son with the edge of the sword, and took Dinah out of Shechem's house, and went out. The sons of Jacob came upon the slain, and spoiled the city, because they had defiled their sister. Jacob feared retaliation would come against him and his family. Therefore, he was upset with Simeon and Levi for attacking those men. The Testament of Levi give us the behind-the-scenes story that the scriptures in the Bible did not mention about the unfortunate event that happened to Dina. The Most High don't play when it comes to his daughters. In the beast system, the daughters of Zion are not respected and they are undervalued by the beast culture and among their own. When the Benjamites brutally violated a daughter of Zion, the Most High almost genocide the entire tribe of Benjamin. Until this day, the tribe of Benjamin remained the smallest tribe. When Reuben violated his stepmother, the Most High did not withheld his hand against him. When Shechem defiled Dina, the Most High approved via the angel of the Lord Michael that spoke with Levi to destroy Shechem and his people. Then the angel brought me down to the earth and gave me a shield and a sword and said to me, Execute vengeance on Shechem because of Dina, thy sister. And I will be with thee because the Lord has sent me. And I slew Shechem first, and Simeon slew Hamar. And after this, my brothers came and smote that city with the edge of the sword. And my father heard these things and was wroth. And he was grieved in that they had received the circumcision, and after that had been put to death. And in his blessings he looked amiss upon us. For we sinned because we had done this thing against his will, and he was sick on that day. But I saw that the sentence of God was for evil upon Shechem, for they sought to do to Sarah and Rebekah as they had done to Dinah, our sister. But the Lord prevented them. And they persecuted Abraham, our father, when he was a stranger, and they vexed his flocks when they were big with young. And Eblin, who was born in his house, they most shamefully handled. The judgment of the Most High was already upon the Hivites in the city of Shechem. When Hamar's son Shechem defiled Dina, the Most High had enough. From the testaments of the sons of Jacob, we've read, revealed that Simeon wasn't a compassionate person. The testament of Simeon described him as a strong man that lacked compassion. He had a hard heart. Israelites, be careful about having a hard heart. Guard your heart and mind. The scripture said Cain had a hard heart. 
What did Cain do? He murdered his brother. Simeon wanted to do the same to Joseph. Jacob said, instrument of cruelty are in Simeon and Levi's habitation. Israelites, you don't want to have a hard heart, especially when the Most High look at your heart. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. As in water face answereth to face, so the heart of man to man. Simeon has zero compassion towards his brother Joseph. Israelites, if you lack compassion and your heart is hard, in addition, the spirit of anger have a stronghold on your life. The tribe of Simeon may be your tribe. Simeon was the main instigator in the plot against Joseph. Simeon wanted to kill Joseph because he was jealous of him. When he didn't get the chance to kill Joseph, he wanted to destroy Joseph's coat. The testament of Zebulon revealed that he did not want to give his brothers Joseph's coat. His brothers had to threaten Simeon in order for him to give them Joseph's coat. Now Simeon took the coat and would not give it up, for he wished to rend it with his sword, as he was angry that Joseph lived and that he had not slain him. Then we all rose up and said unto him, If thou givest not up the coat, we will say to our father that thou alone did this evil thing in Israel. And so he gave it unto them, and they did even as Dan had said. It made sense that when Joseph's brothers went to Mizraim to purchase food because of the famine, when Joseph reunited with his brothers, before he made his identity known to them, he bound Simeon until they brought Benjamin to him. Benjamin was Joseph's full brother. He wanted to make sure his brothers wasn't lying about his little brother Benjamin. And Joseph said unto them the third day, This do and live, for I fear God. If ye be true men, let one of your brethren be bound in the house of your prison. Go ye, carry corn for the famine of your houses, but bring your youngest brother unto me, so shall your words be verified, and ye shall not die. And they did so. And he turned himself about from them, and wept, and returned to them again, and communed with them, and took from them Simeon, and bound him before their eyes. Simeon, Gad, and Dan truly hated Joseph. The tribe of Simeon was divided and scattered in Israel, just like Jacob prophesied. When the time came for the tribes to possess their land inheritance, the tribe of Simeon did not get their own land. Simeon land inheritance was within Judah's land. Judah's land inheritance was too much for them. Therefore, Simeon inheritance was within the tribe of Judah's land inheritance. And the second lot came forth to Simeon, even for the tribe of the children of Simeon, according to their families, and their inheritance was within the inheritance of the children of Judah. And they had in their inheritance Beersheba, or Sheba, and Malada, and Hazar Shual, and Bala, and Azem, and El Talad, and Bethol, and Hormah, and Ziklag, and Beth Makabath, and Hazar Susa, and Beth Leboth, and Shaduem, thirteen cities in their villages. Ain, Ramon, and Ether, and Ashan, four cities in their villages. And all the villages that were round about these cities to Balath Beer, Ramath of the south. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Simeon according to their families. Out of the portion of the children of Judah was the inheritance of the children of Simeon. For the part of the children of Judah was too much for them. Therefore, the children of Simeon had their inheritance within the inheritance of them. Although Simeon's land inheritance was within Judah's territory, the tribe of Simeon was a part of the northern kingdom, despite having their land within Judah's land inheritance. When Moses was blessing the tribes, the tribe of Simeon did not receive a blessing from Moses. Simeon was the only one not mentioned in Deuteronomy chapter 33. In the testament of Simeon, Simeon gathered his children to him when he was 120 years old. Simeon was sick when he gathered his children to him. The copy of the word of Simeon, the things which he spake to his sons before he died, in the hundred and twentieth year of his life, at which time Joseph his brother died. For when Simeon was sick, his sons came to visit him, and he strengthened himself and sat up and kissed them and said, Hearken, my children, 
to Simeon your father, and I will declare unto you what things I have in my heart. In the testament of Simeon, Simeon said to his children that he was the second son born to Jacob by Leah. Simeon confirmed what the scriptures in the Bible said about Leah's prayers being heard when she gave birth to him. I was born of Jacob as my father's second son, and my mother Leah called me Simeon because the Lord had heard her prayer. In the testament of Simeon, Simeon said he became strong. He was not afraid of anything. Simeon said he had a hard heart with no compassion. A lot of Israelites do not have compassion for their own. However, when it comes to the other species of mankind, they have all the compassion in the world for them. Moreover, I became strong exceedingly. I shrank from no achievement, nor was I afraid of aught. For my heart was hard, and my liver was immovable, and my bowels without compassion. In the testament of Simeon, Simeon said that he was jealous of Joseph in many things. The primary reason he was jealous of Joseph, Jacob loved Joseph very much. To parents everywhere, do not love one child more than the other. Let the testimonies of the sons of Jacob teach you to love your children equally. Because of the love Jacob showed towards his son Joseph, led his brothers to conspire against Joseph to harm him. If you're going to love one child more than the other, don't let your favoritism show. For in time of my youth, I was jealous in many things of Joseph, because my father loved him beyond all. Simeon said that he set his mind against Joseph to destroy him because Satan sent the spirit of jealousy to blind his eyes that he would not regard Joseph like a brother nor to have compassion towards his father, Jacob. And I set my mind against him to destroy him because the prince of deceit sent forth the spirit of jealousy and blinded my mind so that I regarded him not as a brother nor did I spare him even Jacob my father. Simeon said the Most High delivered Joseph out of his hands. The scriptures in the Bible made it seem as if all the sons of Jacob were present when Joseph was sold. In the testament of Simeon, Simeon revealed that he went to Shechem to bring ointment for the flocks. The sons of Jacob had stores in the city of Shechem. While he was away, Judah sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites. But his God and the God of his fathers sent forth his angel and delivered him out of my hands. For when I went to Shechem to bring ointment for the flocks and Reuben to Doedan, where were our necessaries and all our stores, Judah, my brother, sold him to the Ishmaelites. The Testament of Zebulon revealed that Judah sold Joseph into slavery. And now the Testament of Simeon confirmed that Judah indeed sold Joseph into slavery. Because Judah sold Joseph into slavery, the Most High sold the tribe of Judah into slavery. You reap what you sow. Simeon revealed that when he heard Judah sow Joseph, he was angry that he let Joseph live. For five months, Simeon persecuted Judah. But on hearing this, I was exceedingly wroth against Judah, and that he let him go away alive. And for five months, I continued wrathful against him. In the testament of Simeon, Simeon revealed that the Most High restrained him against Judah by making his right hand withered. As a result, he lost strength in that hand for seven days. But the Lord restrained me and withheld from me the power of my hands, for my right hand was half withered for seven days. In the testament of Simeon, Simeon said he knew that his hand became withered because of Joseph. Simeon said he repented and wept. He went to the Most High in prayer to restore his right hand. And I knew, my children, that because of Joseph this had befallen me, and I repented and wept, and I besought the Lord God that my hand might be restored, and that I might hold aloof from all pollution and envy and from all folly. For I knew that I had devised an evil thing before the Lord and Jacob my father on account of Joseph my brother, and that I envied him. Simeon said to his children, Beware of the spirit of deceit and envy. Simeon said the spirit of envy make you obsessed with the person you're envious of. The spirit of envy will cause you to harm the person. For envy ruleth over the whole mind of a man, and suffereth him neither to eat nor to drink, nor to do any good thing. But it ever suggesteth to him to destroy him that he envieth. And so long as he that is envieth flourisheth, 
he that envieth fadeth away. In the testament of Simeon, Simeon said that he fasted for two years for his iniquity against Joseph. Reuben fasted seven years for his iniquity. Today, some Israelites can't discipline themselves to fast for one day. Our fathers humbled themselves because they feared the Most High and fasted many years. Simeon said, if you run to the Most High, evil spirits will run away from you. Two years, therefore, I afflicted my soul with fasting in the fear of the Lord, and I learnt that deliverance from envy cometh by the fear of God. For if a man flee to the Lord, the evil spirit runneth away from him, and his mind is lightened. The scriptures in the Bible confirm what Simeon said about evil spirits running away from you when you seek the face of the Most High for refuge. A lot of Israelites in the awakening believe they have to be over the top and give the Most High some enormous sacrifice to get the Most High to respond to them and deliver them from an unclean spirit. If you belong to the Most High, his eyes are on you. I've received many emails and comments from Israelites wanting to know how to get a devil to flee. In countless videos, I say, repent, pray, fast, and seek the face of the Most High and the devil will flee. For some Israelites, this solution is too simple. They feel as if they have to do more. Some Israelites believe fasting and praying is not enough. The Bible said, submit to the Most High, resist the devil, and they will flee from you. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Israelites, you don't need to pay some deliverance past their thousands of dollars. You don't need millions of people praying for you. Humble yourself, repent, seek the face of the Most High, pray, fast, and the devil will flee from you. There's no gimmick in spiritual warfare. When it comes to your walk with the Most High, there's not a default way to serve the Most High like religion make it appear to be. Religion is a one-size-fit-all. Your walk is unique and tailored to you. That is why you must work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. As long as your heart is pure and you repented wholeheartedly, you will be delivered. I've said in countless videos, repent, fast, pray, humble yourself, and the unclean spirits will flee. The kingdom of darkness can stand truth and the word of the Most High. That is why the devils must flee. The word of the Most High is sharp and can pierce the spirit, bringing forth change. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. When some of you who are in sin hear the word, it cut you. The word of the Most High has the power to do that. Many Israelites mistake the word piercing their spirit with me or other people spreading the truth with us judging you. The word of the Most High is correcting you. Israelites, when you repent, pray, and fast, you're delivered. The problem many of you are facing is when the devil returns. You need to know how to maintain your deliverance. Because so many don't know how to maintain their deliverance, when the devil returns, it enters and places a stronger hold on your life because they know you know it's there. In the Testament of Simeon, Simeon said he mourned more than all his brothers because he was more guilty of selling Joseph. Simeon said when Joseph bound him in Egypt as a spy, he knew his affliction was just. For I mourned more than they all, because I was guilty of the selling of Joseph. And when we went down into Egypt, and he bound me as a spy, I knew that I was suffering justly, and I grieved not. In the testament of Simeon, Simeon confessed that Joseph is a good man, and Joseph has the spirit of the Most High within him. He said Joseph was compassionate with no malice in him. Now Joseph was a good man and had the spirit of God within him. Being compassionate and pitiful, he bore no malice against me, but loved me even as the rest of his brethren. In the Testament of Simeon, Simeon said that he read in the book of Enoch that his tribe will corrupt themselves with fornication and will do harm to the sons of Levi with the sword. Simeon said that his tribe would not be able to stand against Levi. Levi will conquer them. For I have seen it inscribed in the writings of Enoch that your sons shall be corrupted in fornication and shall do harm to the sons of Levi with the sword. But they shall not be able to withstand Levi. 
for he shall wage the war of the Lord and shall conquer all your hosts. Many of the sons of Jacob read in the book of Enoch about their tribe. To the people that discredit the book of Enoch, who are you going to believe? The workers of iniquity that altered the scriptures or the spirit of the most high operating in his people in the awakening? Israelites, you shouldn't share the same beliefs with the workers of iniquity. What do light have in common with darkness? Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? Why would you believe the workers of iniquity whose entire existence is to deceive, also to do the will of the Satans? Trust the Most High. In the Testament of Simeon, Simeon said that his tribe would be a few in numbers. His tribe would be divided in Judah. None of his children would be sovereign. And they shall be few in number, divided in Levi and Judah, and there shall be none of you for sovereignty, even as also our father prophesied in his blessings. Simeon said to his children, he told them all things concerning him and his tribe, so that he would not be held accountable for his tribe's sins. Simeon told his children to obey Judah and Levi. Simeon and many other sons of Jacob told their descendants to obey Judah and Levi, because through them salvation will come for our people. And now, my children, obey Levi and Judah, and be not lift up against these two tribes, for from them shall arise unto you the salvation of God. For the Lord shall raise up from Levi as it were a high priest, and from Judah as it were a king. God and men, he shall save all the Gentiles and the race of Israel. After Simeon commended his children, he transitioned to the afterlife. His children placed him in a wooden coffin. When the Israelites left the land of Ham, they took the bones of Simeon with them to bury him next to his fathers in Hebron. Presently in the awakening, there is a doctrine that believe the modern day descendants of Simeon are the Dominican people in the Caribbean. Simeon did not disclose the whereabout of his tribe. The tribe of Simeon was scattered in Judah. I believe the tribe of Simeon is in the land they sojourned after the Assyrian captivity. I also believe there's a remnant of the tribe of Simeon in the diaspora. Those are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land in the time of Osi, the king, whom Salmanazar, the king of Assyria, led away captive. And he carried them over the waters, and so came they into another land. But they took this counsel among themselves, that they would leave the multitude of the heathen, and go forth into a further country, where never mankind dwelt. One of the prophecies against Simeon was that he would be scattered. Because he is scattered, the modern day people, the disciples of Satan, claim to be the children of Simeon, are not. Simeon is a so-called black man. His mother Leah and father are also black, making his descendants black. The majority of the people living on the island of Dominican Republic are mixed race, making them tares. They are the children of the colonizers and they are very proud to be the descendants of the colonizers. The tribe of Simeon exists before the group of people called Dominicans. Prior to colonization, the so-called Dominican people didn't exist. Israelites, stop giving your heritage to the heathens. Stop trying to make the heathens leaders over you. Thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee. Whom the Lord thy God shall choose, one from among thy brethren shalt thou set king over thee. Thou mayest not set a stranger over thee, which is not thy brother. The modern day people living on the island of Dominican Republic are not the descendants of the tribe of Simeon. The 12 tribe charts are false. I will keep saying this until this doctrine dies in the awakening and Israelites stop promoting those false charts. Israelites, learn from all the fathers whose testaments we've read. Set an example for the next generation. Don't let the everlasting covenant die with you, but transfer to the next generation. The time has come for us to claim our heritage and culture. Allow the Most High in the awakening to reveal to you who you are. Don't let a heathen tell you who you are. You must trust the Most High in Him only should you follow and serve. Therefore with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. And in that day shall ye say, Praise the Lord, call upon His name, declare His doings among the people, 
make mention that his name is exalted. Sing unto the Lord, for he hath done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Cry out and shout, thou inhabitant of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee.